What's up YouTube community, Bernd here with another lesson video for you. Today we will check out some very cool and easy ways of spicing up power chords or perfect fifths. Everyone's favorite little chord can also sound quite suspenseful and interesting and the main goal with this lesson is to help you with your song and riff writing. I will explain all of those interesting variations in detail for you and of course I will also show you how to apply them in a practical context from now on. Remember to subscribe to stay updated for more free guitar lessons, I release them on a weekly basis on here, but for now without further ado let's check out the example I recorded for you this week. So as you heard we are switching back and forth between the standard power chord and the variations I want to show you. This is meant to give you a direct comparison of those interesting sounds. The power chord is the backbone of more songs that I could possibly think of and there is absolutely nothing wrong with just sticking to the perfect fifth interval for your compositions but it will help you a lot creatively to know a couple of tricks to make the sound a little bit more interesting and unique. My personal approach concerning that is never actually learning chords from a chord book or anything like that. I just extend the chords using notes that I can find within the musical environment I'm working in. The same goes for arpeggios, but I guess that's a topic for another video. I already showed you a bit on that in my video lesson on the arpeggio hacks that I released a couple of weeks ago. So let's dissect every single variation in detail now. First I'm trading the octave on top of the standard power chord for a minor 6th interval. Which sounds pretty interesting in my opinion. The octave doesn't do much for the sound of the chord. It's actually the most boring note you could possibly add, so to say. It does make the power chord a little bit bigger. Here's the comparison if I just play the perfect fifth. Now I'm adding the octave. So it makes the sound a little bit bigger so to say, but it doesn't add any specific color to it. By adding this minor sixth instead, the chord gets a pretty dark color because the interval is rubbing against the perfect fifth. Those two notes are just a semitone apart. So the perfect fifth of A would be E and the minor sixth would be F. And instead of just playing the minor sixth interval like that, we keep the perfect fifth but add F on top here on the third fret on the D string. So by adding this minor sixth interval instead the chord gets a pretty dark color because the interval is rubbing against the perfect fifth. Those two notes are just a semitone apart. If I play them on the same string this would be the perfect fifth E and this would be the minor sixth F. So they are just a semitone apart. But I'm not just playing the minor sixth interval like that instead of the perfect fifth. So these two notes are just a semitone apart and are rubbing against each other. This tension works exceptionally great whenever you're looking for a suspenseful sound and my process here is just thinking in A minor, in the A natural minor scale. And I'm visualizing all of these notes of the scale on the fretboard and then I pick the interval I want to add and look for possibilities to form the chord. So as we said F can also be found here. But if I play the minor sixth here I can't play the perfect fifth too. So I have to pick F here on the third fret on the D string instead of the eighth fret on the A string. So the main thing I want you to memorize here is that we could also just only play the minor 6 interval but it would not sound that interesting because we are missing the tension of the minor 6 rubbing against the perfect 5th.
that is a much more interesting sound than just playing the minor sixth interval. Up next we're working with a similar voicing. Let's hear how that one sounds like. Sounds pretty cool too. For this one we exchanged the perfect fifth for a minor sixth, just like we discussed. But we also add the octave and then we also add the minor third C on top. So this one is quite sophisticated compared to the last one. If we see it as a simple power chord replacement, it sounds quite dark and suspenseful and clearly has that natural minor color because those two notes we add are very characteristic for this kind of sound. So from now on you can memorize those two connected voicings. First we change the octave for a minor sixth for a more basic but still suspenseful sound and approach. And then we change the perfect fifth to a minor sixth and then added the octave and also the minor third on top, which is very important. I have to bar the fifth fret here, so I can play both A and C on the fifth fret of the E and the G string. So make sure you can hear C when you play this voicing, because it's very important for the color of the chord. So the second voicing has a dark and sad color that resembles the tonal qualities of Aeolian or natural minor. Let's keep moving and check out the next voicing. This one is one of my absolute favorites and it sounds like that. So here we change the octave again, this time to a major second or ninth. I really love minor chord voicings including the ninth because of the open and floating sound you get out of them. But of course we also have to add the minor third again here to make this a minor voicing on the fifth fret on the G string. So we have to bar the fifth fret again to play both A and C. And I really love this kind of open and floating sound you get out of chords like that. It's much more interesting than the plain power chord sound so to say. You can also ignore the minor third here on top of course if the voicing is a little bit too hard at the moment and just play or depends on the fingering you prefer. This is also a nice sound but it lacks the tonal quality of minor or major. So this kind of chord can be used in a minor or major context but we make the context and the sound much more clear by adding that minor third on top. So you still get that open and floating kind of sound, but the chord is now missing the tension it had before. The ninth and the minor sixth are rubbing against each other once again, because they are just a semitone apart, just like the first example we discussed. We have the major third C and the ninth B. And as you can see, they are just a semitone apart again and that creates this kind of nice tension that we can hear within this chord. This kind of tension always sounds quite extreme and possibly terrible for your ears if you just play the interval, just those two notes here. But it works great in the context of the chord. You get that killer suspenseful sound. So let's see what we have next. For the next example I came up with this one. So if the other chords weren't uh, suspenseful enough for you or dissonant enough for you, this is the one I guess. For this voicing we take the one from before but we lower the ninth or major second we introduced by a semitone and get a very dissonant and Phrygian vibe. As we discussed whenever we talk about the modes, Phrygian features that lowered second scale degree above the root. In the case of A Phrygian that would be instead of so instead of 
So whenever we think of Phrygian we have this kind of sound in mind. Instead of natural minor. We have this one right here. And this kind of tension can also be heard in this chord. When we add that interval to a chord we get a lot of tension because it sounds like a wrong note, so to say. The minor second intervals are always dissonant as we already hear with some of the other chords we discussed, but this time this minor second interval revolves around the root and that makes the sound even more extreme. So in order to work with this one for a Phrygian composition you would probably have to resolve it to the octave to work with a tension and release kind of approach. Something like that for example. For this example I'm using this kind of dark Phrygian chord but I'm resolving the tension right here to the octave. That possibly works better than just staying on the Phrygian chord for the entire composition that may be a little bit too, too much or too dissonant. So let's see the final chord for today. This is what I played in the practical example in the demonstration. This one has that characteristic harmonic minor sound that we discussed a lot already on here. With that uh, raised seventh scale degree. But it can also be seen as a very basic A major seventh chord that is missing the major third for example. So if we think like that for example it could also serve as a basic A major 7th chord. And that's quite interesting in my opinion. Chords that are missing the major or minor 3rd can be used in either context. Sus chords are also a good example of that. There we swap the 3rd for a major 2nd for sus 2 or perfect 4th for sus 4 chords. And those chords can also be used in any context as long as the rest of the notes are in the key you're working with. A quick example in the key of A minor when you think about the tonic. Just the basic A minor chord right here. We could replace C, the minor third on top here with B, a major second. And get that nice floating open sound again. But now the chord doesn't feature a third. It doesn't have a major or minor third in it. So I could use it in either context because B is featured in both of these scales in A major and A minor. So you can memorize this last chord. as a way to bring out that harmonic minor sound in your composition without using more complex chords like the minor major 7th chord or just as a basic version of an A major 7th chord. So I really hope that this video made my approach of songwriting concerning power chords a little bit clearer. As you learned I'm constructing my own kind of shapes to my liking by working with notes that I can find within different scales and extending the simple chord structure with them. By working and thinking like that you will add some very nice extra harmonic context to your compositions because the power chord itself is pretty neutral in color, it doesn't sound sad, happy, suspenseful, dark or anything like that. By adding those interesting sounds and intervals to it you can adapt it to fit the style and atmosphere of your song way better. So once again please make sure to subscribe to stay updated for more free guitar lessons. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video or if you even learned something new that would be great and a comment if you have any kind of question I could answer for you. I will see you in the next video. As always the tabs for all of these chords are online on my Patreon page so make sure to check it out if you would like to dig deeper. Until then have a lot of fun practicing. See you soon.